An explosion rocked the car, the floor vibrating under his feet. He looked around, trying to find the source, when he spotted flames out the window. They spiraled into the air, sending a massive amount of small black objects in every direction. He pushed Ethel and stared out the window. What fresh hell is this? Towers of smoke blotted out the sky. The dam, or what had been the dam, sat less than a half mile up the track. McCall guessed it to be another quarter of a mile or so off to the right of the rail. They would break even with it soon. Oh, shit, Jones said. Water burst through the massive hole in the dam and crashed against the ground. Mud and soot rolled ahead of the water, cutting a swath through the desert. McCall could see the rough outline of the bed where the river had been prior to the dam. The water followed that path, but the immense amount of it consumed the bed and more, spilling out further and further. Shit! McCall echoed Jones, realizing the trouble they were in. The water already approached the tracks ahead of them, and they would crash into it soon. They had no ammo or food, and the moaners, as scattered as they were, approached from the east. McCall jumped back into the aisle and raced toward the front of the train, hoping the conductor could slow the locomotive. Karen must have realized where he was headed and ran along behind him. He threw the door open and did the same for the engine car. The smell hit him in the face. The engine stank of death. Blood coated every surface. The conductor's head was impaled on a lever in front of the boiler. His mouth hung slack, and his eyes rolled back in their sockets. Blood still dripped from the severed neck. His body wasn't in the room. What the hell? Karen asked. She covered her nose with her hand. Evans, McCall said with a grimace. Sick fuck. He looked over the controls and noticed that most of them were too badly damaged to operate. Evans had not only killed Andrew, he made sure that no one could do anything to slow them down. We're screwed, Karen said. That sounds about right. McCall jogged back into the passenger car and stood beside Jones. They looked out the window and watched the churning water as its level rose higher, engulfing the area. They were seconds away. Karen tore past them, running farther down the aisle. What are you doing? McCall asked. The boys. We have to save the... The train collided with the water, spraying it from under its wheels like a geyser. The impact sent the occupants of the car hurtling forward. Jones flew into the front wall of the car, his shoulder wrenching at an odd angle. McCall landed on top of him, feeling his insides smash together. They fell to the floor in unison, a jumble of limbs and blood, as water overtook them. Something splashed into the water beside McCall, but he couldn't make it out through the splashing and bubbles. His head crested the surface, and he gulped at the air, taking in giant mouthfuls of it as he tried to shake the water from his eyes. He looked toward the other end of the car and recoiled when he realized it was tipped at an angle. More murky water rushed in as the car fell over on its side, dragging McCall along the seats. He fell against the roof, grimacing as he landed against the hard wood. He stood again, this time on the right wall, which was now underneath him. The water rose past his chest and covered his shoulders before he could orientate himself. Jones's head popped up beside him, coughing and sputtering as he tried to clear the water from his lungs. He looked at McCall in panic fighting to keep his head above the rising surface. I can't swim with my hands tied. Cut me loose. With what? My teeth? McCall felt his conscience tug at him again. He knew this man was a son of a bitch, but he didn't think he could let him drown. Damn. He took a deep breath and dove down, scanning the area for something to cut Jones's wire. He spotted Karen's knife a few feet below him, that must have been what splashed beside him during the crash. Had it been two feet to his left, it probably would have skewered him. Grabbing the knife with his right hand, he tried to see through the water to the other end of the car. He had Karen's weapon, but where was she? Sediment swirled in front of him, not allowing him to see more than a few feet. Karen didn't appear to be anywhere near him. He resurfaced to find that the water had risen another two feet. They would be out of room shortly.